Today, we drove through Southern Illinois in Indiana on our way towards Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky, where today's video takes place. We have made it to Mammoth Cave National Park, our 11th national park. And pardon any construction equipment you may hear in the background, they're doing extensive renovations to the Mammoth Cave Lodge right now. Uh, Mammoth Cave is the largest cave system in the world at over 400 miles. It was formed by the Green River seeping down through the limestone and wearing away at the rock over time. Uh, the park was established in 1941, prior to which it was a privately operated venture. Before that, the cave had been used for roughly 5,000 years with evidence of Native Americans mining gypsum from 17 miles of cave tunnels. And in the early 1800s as well, the soil in the cave was extracted because of the nitrates in it, which when processed became gunpowder, which is where about three quarters of the gunpowder used in the War of 1812 came from, which is just a crazy amount. There is a deer like right behind us. And when you picture Mammoth Cave, you don't really generally think wildlife, at least I don't, but we were just walking along this little trail not too far from the visitor center there's a deer just walking right along the other side of this ridge it's super cool very reminiscent of our experience in glacier as well how they'll just walk right up to you they're not shy at all it's just very peacefully grazing along this hillside it's also really like cool a to really see steep hill so it's just like standing on little like ledges it's, just... it's channeling it's in a mountain goat yes <laughs> yes mountain goat in addition to the cave tours, they have hiking trails in the woods that you can walk on. You can even do horseback riding here. Um, there's a lot of water activities you can do. There's boating, kayaking, fishing, all sorts of things. We're kind of doing a couple small trails around the visitor center, but we don't have a ton of time here. So we're not doing any of the longer distance hikes along some of the bluffs, but they do look really cool. If you have more time in the area, mm -hmm. definitely be sure to check them out. We got to the visitor center a little while before our scheduled cave tour, so we took some time to look around. It had a museum like Gateway Arch, and although it was a bit smaller than that, we thoroughly enjoyed its exhibits and information about the cave. It had one area where it had a mold of the cave tunnels that was just this huge winding maze. Then it showed that section on a map, and it was just a tiny slice of the cave system. It was a really neat way to show just how massive the cave really is. After we picked up our tickets, we went back outside the visitor center where they had buses waiting to take visitors to the various entrances for the cave tours they had selected. Our group had three buses to fit everyone with a short drive under 10 minutes. The entrance to the cave was through a natural sinkhole that they had built a door into, as well as stairs that we followed 200 feet into the ground. Most of the tour was single file, but there were three or four spots we would regroup and the ranger would give us a description of the area. And as I'm sure you can imagine, the lighting inside the cave was far from ideal for video, so be sure to turn your brightness up for this section. At one point, he even turned off the lights to make it completely dark, then pulled out a lighter to show what early explorers of the cave would have seen with just a torch. He also talked about some history of the cave, and mentioned that several people ran independent cave tours out of various sections of the cave, and tried to trick tourists into coming to theirs by naming it the new entrance to Mammoth Cave, or trying to convince them that the other entrances had collapsed.
As we made our way through the tunnels, there were also a few larger rooms, usually where we ended up regrouping. The largest room in the cave, although not on the tour we took, is nearly two acres across. One spot on our tour also had a waterfall of sorts falling straight down from the ceiling. It was more of a trickle while we were there, but we were told that after larger amounts of rainfall, it's definitely flowing a lot more. The primary feature on this tour, and one of the main things to see in the cave itself, is the frozen Niagara, which is a massive stalactite type formation created by water depositing various minerals over time. The whole area around it was full of other dripstones too, which is something abnormal to most of the rest of the cave, which is largely dry and made up of sandstone and limestone. That was super awesome. It definitely exceeded all expectations. Definitely. We did the Dolms and Dripstones tour, uh, which entered through uh, kind of a little shack built into the side of, crazy. Uh, uh, what is it, a sinkhole, mm -hmm. uh, where they just kind of go down into the cave there. There mm -hmm. were lots of spiders. You really oh liked those. Oh my goodness, those. there were so many spiders, like right in the beginning. I wasn't expecting spiders. They were like huge They were spiders. super big too, and there's and it was cave, cave crickets. crickets. They were really big. They looked. <laughs> They almost look like little spiders too because they, they have the six legs and then the two giant antennas that look like little legs. Uh, but the historic entrance, which we took some footage of as well, hopefully that turned out, you can see it goes down for the historic tour because they have a whole bunch of tours they offer mm -hmm. to see all parts of the cave. The historic tour goes down through the oldest, or it's the oldest entrance. It goes down through this big sinkhole. There's like water mm -hmm. dripping down through it. So it's cool. super cool, but so cool. Uh, even with a really large group, we had a really mm. good ranger who gave a lot of information, was very informative. It didn't feel like you're in a large group because mm, a lot of time out. you're single file. Yeah, and going down, if you're claustrophobic at all. Yeah, or afraid of heights. Uh, yeah, because a lot of times you can just see straight down because it's like mm -hmm. these see-through metal grates you can see down mm -hmm. 80 feet or whatever it is. And mm. Very tight passages. Oh, yeah. You have to bend over, stoop over, and it, a lot of steps too. So, so you definitely want to be in pretty good shape for that, but... It was a really good experience mm -hmm. and it, like I said, exceeded all expectations. So fun.